welcome to Jersey. Uh, what do you see, and I appreciate you've appeared only a few weeks in the job, what do you see as the major challenges facing you in, in running Jersey's police force? They're not dissimilar challenges to anywhere else I've worked really. My first challenge is trying to understand the operating context and how we work here in Jersey. Uh, I've described it before, it's a bit like taking a drink out of a fire hydrant, you know, lots and lots of people giving you lots and lots of information. So really, I suppose, to answer your question, I suppose demand is one of those areas. You know, there was increasing demand, and, w and with it comes expectation. You know, quite rightly, the public expect the highest public services from the police service in particular. So how we deal with that demand, whether we deal with it using technology and the rest. Slight increases in crime, in, you know, I often read and we often hear it's a safe place to live. Well, indeed, Jersey is a safe place to live, but it's my job to make sure we make it even safer. So there's just a couple of things just just for reference really. What would you say to some people who might say this looks like a nice retirement sinecure for a, a very senior officer of the mainland who's yeah, at the last days of their career? What would you do to reassure people that, not that you're taking the job seriously, of course you are, but it isn't that just nice little retirement niche? Hmm. There's a slight tinge of irritation with that, <laughs> only, only because it, you, you may think I'm old enough to retire <laughs> and uh, I don't think I'm that old yet. Um, well, let, let, let people make that judgment as things go ahead. Uh, of course, staff here will understand how determined I am with them indeed. I think their determination is even greater than mine to prov provide even the best services that we possibly can. I'm pretty confident I can reassure people of, that it's not what you might describe as a retirement job. In mainland UK forces, obviously which you're experienced with, we've seen severe cutbacks over the last 10 years. We've seen similar cuts here in Jersey. Now it's almost as if those cuts are, are, people are rowing back from that and saying actually we cut too deeply in some of the police forces. Is there a feeling here that Jersey Force needs to expand and maybe some of those cuts were actually too deep? Well, from a UK perspective, you know, the last 10 or 12 years, yes, there were cuts. But you know, in the UK, they achieved an awful lot with having less money than with more. So things had to be done, some things which required uh, greater efficiency and indeed effectiveness. But of course, here in Jersey, we've seen an increase or a, a budget increase to increase our police officer numbers to 215, and I've already gone through the plans about how we're going to deliver that. The important thing with that is that our public see and feel the difference. So I'm quite confident going into this year. People look at your career and see where you work with Sussex and Surrey, where there were shared resources. Is there a need maybe to look at how policing in the Channel Islands is carried out? There's a separate police force in, Jer in Guernsey for what is a a, a small population. F to an outsider it seemed to make sense just to have one police force for the entire Channel Islands. I think the public expect that we provide the most efficient services possible. So we should look at how we can provide you know, better efficiencies and that includes things around HR and finance and the rest of it and that doesn't have to necessarily exclusively be with another force. And indeed I've had another of, number of conversations since I've been here about how we can provide the same services for less. Normally what, we, what some might describe as some of those back office functions and indeed coincidentally on Friday I'm meeting the chief from uh, Guernsey where we're going to have those conversations about how we could better collaborate together. So do you think there are, are savings to be made in, in both Channel Islands if you merge some of those back office functions or shared them? It's still early days, you know, I'm, I'm still drinking from that fire hydrant. Uh, it's still early days. My experience is there are always opportunities. Let's explore them. The force in Jersey has had uh, at the top, if I can put it this way, a lack of stability in recent years, a, a number of changing acting chiefs for a variety of reasons. How important is that you, you come in now as that figure of stability for staff here? I, I'd say the word stability is, is probably one word that's come up more than any other. Uh, certainly from internal inside the organisation. Uh, I'm determined to give that stability. I think it's really, really important because otherwise it's a distraction. It's a distraction to providing the great service that I want to provide with my team out there. We've seen a, a recent uh, staff surveys in the last couple of years. Last year's, I think, by general agreement, was fairly disastrous in terms of what it said about staff morale. We've just had a new one, which is saying things have got considerably better but 40% of staff still feel there's a morale issue. What can you do directly to address that? Well, first of all, I'm delighted that, we've, that, we, that the team have done so well in trying to increase it from a fairly low level. Indeed, I've already had conversations with the senior team about those things that we might need to do to improve that morale. I think a lot of that will, will help with the increase in police numbers. You know, they, they certainly did feel under pressure. 
and also about what I often call the hygiene factors. You know, are we looking after them in terms of their own well-being, kits, equipment, and all those rest of those things? And providing, I think, you know, goes back to the stability thing that they've got the right leadership and the leadership that's supportive. How difficult is it for you as a, as a new chief coming in, where your direct boss, if you like, uh, Julian Blaisbury, is one of your predecessors? Well, the the police authority is really my direct boss, and of course, there's important links with the JHA and indeed Julian. Um, uh, I've seen something similar to that in previous jobs uh, and of course who's our number one job who's our number one boss the number one boss is the public and how the public see the service that the SOJP delivers so you don't feel any tension there you don't feel in some ways it's somebody your, your predecessor spying on you in his role at the new justice and crime directorate well so far so good and I see no reason why that would ever be a problem in fact sometimes when we're talking about quite difficult policing matters one or two which we've discussed in the time that I've been here sometimes can be very helpful I think everybody accepts frontline officers, regardless of which force they're serving, and have a difficult job. Police officers I've spoken to say one of their frustrations is the issues with the mental health that some members of the public have, and at three o'clock in the morning, they're on the front line dealing with those rather than social workers, and they have little or no option but to sometimes bring people for their own protection into custody, which is probably the worst thing to do for somebody with mental health issues. Do you think social services broadly should be doing more to help out your officers in situations like that? First of all, it's a difficult job, but it's a great job. You know, I've been doing this job over 30 years and I love it. In fact, I like it even more now than when I joined 30 years ago. There, mental health is a wicked problem. Uh, and one thing I have learned, whether it's in the UK or elsewhere, and indeed some, some more information since I've been here, the solution doesn't lie with one particular group or one particular department. It's how we work together. Yes, the police are often seen as a line of last resort because we go there normally in crisis. So let's look how we might be able to adopt some other plans around triage teams and various other things I've seen in other places and see how we can find a solution to that. But one thing's for certain, it's not in one particular department and it's certainly not with the police. The HMIC report that was published in, in September last year raised a number of concerns, particularly about the independence of, the, of Jersey Police, which it saw potentially as an issue. What will you do as Chief Officer to, to ensure that independence from politicians? The HMIC report uh, came at a really good time, you know, certainly for a, a new coming Chief Officer, so we can have a, if you like, a sense check of how the organisation is working. And of course, as you will know, there's a number of very, very, very good things that are in that report. Yes, operational independence features in that report, as in does in, indeed in the CAG report as well. Uh, and I've been asked that question a number of times as well. I am ferocious when it comes to operational independence of the police service. And I see myself as a guardian of that independence. And indeed, those people that I've spoken to all agree. Another thing that was picked up in the report, and I appreciate this is before you came in to take over as chief officer was that the force effectively hadn't moved with the times it raised concerns that the force hadn't really got to grips with human trafficking and particularly with organized crime groups so as again as chief officer what will you do to to move the force forward to, to meet those challenges well bearing in mind that that report now is probably around 12 months old there's an awful lot of work that's already gone into so a, a genuine acceptance from senior detectives particularly uh, here in SOJP about responding to that from what I've seen and appreciate it's very early doors, they've moved quite significantly to addressing some of those issues in the time since we've had the report. And again, just uh, slightly going over previous ground, quoting directly from this report, it talked about the restructure of the force and it said that we are concerned uh, that potentially the governance situation is made worse by compromising the operational independence of the Chief of Police with the new Justice and Home Affairs Directorate. There seems to be a concern, there's a lack of clear blue water, if I can use that phrase, between the politicians and governance and yourselves. Is that something that concerns you? No, it doesn't concern me. I, I'm, I'm clear about some of the history that's gone with it. We're looking at some form of legislation and indeed introducing some form of, if you like, policing protocol, which was introduced in the UK some years ago when the introduction of the Police and Crime Commissioners. Um, but the day-to-day -day activities as the new Chief Officer, I, I have, I'm very clear about what my operational independence is. And if anybody seeks to test or challenge that, then there will be a conversation, but I foresee no problems whatsoever at this early stage. Neighbourhood policing, community policing was one of the things that suffered in the UK when cuts were made. Again, this report mentions community policing and concerns over that. Do you want to see communities 
policing restored in Jersey to become much more visible? Now, there's always competing challenges. So, you know, whether it's OCGs, and I will be relentless, indeed ruthless, with those OCGs, those organised crime groups, particularly those associated with drugs, building on some of my experience in, in other places. But it's community policing where it all starts. So we will see a change, and I'm confident that the public will see a change in regards to what I've described as rebooting our community policing efforts. And indeed, there's already some comments made about we're seeing more police officers. Of course, we'll see more once we get more, and we've got uh, our plans to see those officers in by towards the end of this year, where we recruit up to the 215, as I mentioned soon. But the bedrock of policing in SOJP will be community policing. Policing into the communities, knowing who our key people are who want to see us, the public seeing us, but it's not just about being seen, it's being about being visible, accessible and engaging effectively. And it isn't, as I've often sometimes described about, you know, handing out rosettes and taking selfies. I want a hard edge to that policing as well. As I've said, we catch criminals, we get there quickly when you need us and we protect the vulnerable. When you come to retire, many years from now, and you look back on your time at Jersey, how will you judge if you've been a success? That's an interesting one, that. Indeed, you know, you, uh, when you reach a uh, chief officer position, you think, what is it you want to leave? Although, very early days. I want to leave a legacy where we've got highly skilled, uh, talented staff, because that's one of the other challenges you mentioned, challenges at the start of this, how we get the very best people coming to what I would say is the very best job. Um, the best staff and also that there is a, some succession planning and I think that's really really important that as a chief you leave a legacy where you've got good good ability good skills good talent coming up and through the ranks both as police officers and police staff. Lovely thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.